Real quick, before you guys sit down, I want to ask you a quick question. They say that when you're uh, excited to do something or you're anticipating it, that you'll dream. And this week, I got to share with you two quick dreams that I had. One was three nights ago, and I woke up in the middle of the night almost in a sweat because I was dreaming that I was backstage, and Pastor Stephanie looked at me and said, what two songs are you singing? (laughs) And I woke up in bed like, I don't sing. And last night, about 4.30, or I guess this morning, I woke up, and a similar dream, I was sitting in a back room, and there was a piano and two pieces of music, and I looked at it, and I just knew that they were expecting me to sing and play the piano now. And I looked over, there were two guys with beanies that looked like they went to a, like a youth group, and I was like, what am I do? And he was like, he was like, you're supposed to play. And I was like, do you know anybody that plays the piano? He goes, this is the belonging. Everyone plays the piano. <laughs> Not this white boy. I was a drummer. So thank you, guys. You may be seated. Uh, crazy dream. Really quick, how many of you guys in here, I wanted you to be honest about this, and if you don't, it's okay, but how many of you guys have ever felt like God put something in your heart or he called you to do something that was beyond you? Show, show me your hand really quick if you have. It's okay if you don't, it's okay. Okay, now keep your hand raised, keep your hand raised. If you guys have ever done that, and let me ask you this, if you have made an effort to step into that calling, but you were faced with significant resistance, keep your hand up. Look around. Wow, that's amazing. Today I wanna share with you about a year ago, me and my wife made a journey to Nashville out of obedience. We felt called to this area specifically. And what was fascinating about that was that when we moved here, we had an amazing story. It was the craziest real estate market we had ever seen in our adult lives. And we made an offer on a home. What's interesting about this is it was an old church building. That's right, we're like those kind of weird people that are like, we'll just make it a house. So our realtor called us and he was like, guys, you're never gonna believe this. You got the house. He goes, but here's the crazy part. He goes, there were multiple offers. Yours wasn't the highest, but they picked yours. And I'm like, wow, God. He goes, and here's the best part. They chose not to enact your escalation clause and you can have it for list price. Isn't God good? Yeah, right? Now, fast forward three weeks we had almost been living in this house. We had made a little section in the right. We were living in the old fellowship hall, me and my wife and my kids, all in one big room. It was like the Brady Bunch, but we all hated each other. And a door came and there was a knock on the door. And I was actually working two and a half hours out of town when this happened. And I heard my wife in tears. And husbands, if you know, if you answer the phone and your wife is crying, you, you do whatever you do. You get in the car. And I got in the car and I said, what's wrong? And she said, we have to leave. And I said, leave where? She said, the house. They just came and they told us we have to leave. And I said, who told you you have to leave? She said, the county. They came with a booklet of about this thick of 20 years of information. And they said, your house doesn't have a certificate of occupancy. It doesn't have a septic permit. And it doesn't have any building permits for anything that was done the last 20 years. They nailed a big thing on the door that said, stop work. And they gave us an official letter that said, you have 30 days to leave. Remember that part I said about, it was like, God gave us this house for list price. We were so excited. And then within 30 days, it was like, boom. God, what are you doing right now? And the message I wanna give you today is this, and I feel like it's very strongly, is that there is conditioning to the call. There is conditioning to the call that God has placed on your life because the you that you see that God downloads that vision to you You look out ahead and you're like, I'm going to do that. That's going to be good. And it's like leg day. (laughs) And how many of you know, Pastor Wes, Christians don't let Christians skip leg day. (laughs) And God has called us to do some stuff, church. I love it that this house, we're called to take ground. But what if that ground is on a hill and you don't have the spiritual strength to make it up there? God is going to condition you. And if you're not careful, you're going to get a little bit angry and you're going to do like I did about 3 p.m. one afternoon when I walked outside my front of my church house, I got in my truck and I screamed to God so loud my voice got hoarse because I was angry. But it was misplaced because it wasn't about me. God was trying to get me to see something and and I love the kindness of Holy Spirit because he just rose a scripture in my heart and he said, James chapter one, verse two. James chapter one, verse two, it says this. This is out of the Amplified Version. Consider it nothing but joy, 
Brothers and sisters, whenever you fall into various trials, be assured that the testing of your faith through experience. How many of y'all have experienced some things that didn't understand? You didn't know why. Why am I dealing with this, God? Why is this happening? Why did I leave my friends and my family and my business and uproot my kids and move here to all of a sudden be told, no, you got to get out? God was trying to do something through an experience. Here's what it says. It produces endurance, leading to spiritual maturity and inner peace. And let endurance have its perfect result and do a thorough work so that you may be perfect and completely developed in your faith, lacking nothing. See, I'm afraid, church, that sometimes we've become a copy and paste Christian. We look and we see the path that's been paved by the people that built this house and we say, I want to do that, I want to do that, but you have no clue what's been given up to even make this stage upon which I stand. I was talking to Pastor Paul last week and he referenced it in his sermon and it touched my heart. He said, my family hasn't even seen my children. What are you willing to give up for the call that God has placed on your life? What are you willing to step into and say, I don't understand this, but it's going to happen? It's worth it. I'm here today to tell you because I want to give you the end of that story. The six months that we walked through was the absolute hardest that we ever experienced as a married couple, as a father, as a mother. There were days I was in my truck. I was talking to the state fire marshal's representative pleading our case that we are not bad people, we are good people, and we want to do the right thing. And he said, there's nothing I can do. I'm sending your information to the power company to have your power turned off if you do not leave the house. You know what the Holy Spirit said to me in that moment? He said, let it lay. And this man told me in 28 years, I've never not seen them turn off power when we make an official request. I can tell you that 30 days passed and my power was still on. Now you gotta know if you're gonna deny the state fire marshal that you better heard from the Holy Ghost. <laughs> but I had heard and so I let that sit and 60 days came, 90 days came, 120 days came, 180 days came and I'm here to testify today that we are living in our home because we sat before the mayor and the Williamson County Board officials and they said you are granted permission by a variance and you can have all of your permits, you can have all of your septic permits and to the glory of God, somebody was looking out. Now what I learned in that was this, you fall in three categories and I'm gonna say it to you right now. You might be looking at me and be like, I'm not dealing with that Colby. You will, if you serve God long enough, God's gonna ask you to do something that's gonna be out of your comfort zone. So here's what you do. Right now, you begin to pin his faithfulness because there will be a day where you will feel like you're in a desert. The second thing you need to do, the, the category that you could be in, you might be in your desert. You might be there right now. You might be in like the, you know, the pit. You might be in the Pharaoh's, the Potiphar's house, all that. And here's what you need to do. You need to continue to take steps. You just keep taking. I had a friend, Cliff Graham. God love him. He's in California. He said, Colby, just keep taking one more step in that direction. Don't give up. You can't give up. And the third category is this. Maybe you've been through a season where God conditioned you and you're walking in that call and you're feeling like you're fulfilled and you're doing well. Friend, I want to encourage you that there are other people around you that God has put near you to encourage them in their conditioning. Because friends don't let friends skip leg day. Right? Can you give God some praise? Thank you. We love you, church. So good.